Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Sumedha and here we give you a glimpse of some of the most important stories that made the headlines today. On the Rafale issue, the Supreme Court has started hearing a review petition following its December 14 verdict where it had dismissed all the pleas against the deal between India and France. In its defence, the government had said that the relevant documents of the deal have been stolen from the Defence Ministry. Therefore, the papers which are obtained by the Hindu, which are also cited in the petition, are in a violation of the Official Secrets Act. Giving a befitting reply to the government, Justice K.M. Joseph has said, and I quote, You keep repeating national security. Suppose a crime like corruption has been committed, can you shelter it under national security? If a law has been broken through a corrupt practice, can you seek protection under national security? The court will hear the plea again on the March 14th. This government has been making mistakes after mistake in covering up the alleged Rafal scam. First, with a stolen documents narrative, and now the government is trying its best to shoot the messenger. The leading newspaper Hindu has already published five reports on Rafal over the past several weeks and is now becoming the target of the government. India's Attorney General K.K. Venugopal has said that there is a case that can actually be filed against the Hindu for citing the documents in public interest under India's Official Secrets Act. However, it has to be noted that the reports which were published by Hindu are in public interest. Criticising the Attorney General's comment, the Editors Guild of India has also issued a statement saying that such remarks will actually go on to intimidate the media in general and curb the freedom to report and comment specifically on the Rafal issue. There are many questions that are surrounding the deal as well as the government's attitude towards the probe. But the main question is that why can't the government secure its most secretive documents? And if these documents were procured by the Hindu for public interest, why can't questions be raised over the contents of the documents? Succumbing to pressure from students and teachers, the cabinet has finally approved the Human Resource Development Ministry's proposal to introduce an ordinance that will restore the 200-point roster for faculty reservation in universities. Previously, the 13-point roster system, which was introduced in the month of March, meant that new jobs for scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and the other backward classes would reduce significantly in numbers. Several Dalit rights activists, students and teachers' unions have been consistently demanding the introduction of an ordinance to overturn the 13-point roster system. This move of the central government is being seen as the victory for the long struggle that has been carried out by these civil rights activists, protesting teachers as well as the students. Under the 200-point roster system, the entire college or the university was taken as one unit across which reserved seats were distributed. It was ensured that out of every 200 posts, 99 posts remained reserved for SC, ST and OBC communities, with 101 posts were unreserved. This made sure that 200 appointments were made in the entire college or universities and all reserved categories were given an earmarked number of seats across various departments, provided 200 appointments were made in the entire college or the university. In our international section, we're talking about the conservative news channel Fox, which has now been barred from hosting the Democratic candidates' political debates for the 2020 elections. The Democratic Committee took this decision on the basis of the news, which had come out last week, where the channel is reportedly associated with current President Donald Trump. Since the beginning of Trump's presidency, he's been aversive of channels such as CNN and MSNBC. It was not a long time ago that Trump had mocked CNN's White House correspondent Jim Acosta and had also disallowed and banned him from covering various White House events. Talking about the Democrats' decision, Trump has tweeted that he may also consider to boycott a few media houses because he considers them fake and the radical left. Since the time the world's politics has taken a right shift, there is a rise of the right-wing parties and a tussle between free press and political parties has become very, very common. From Philippines to US to India, free speech and free press are facing the wrath and the burn of the right-wing conservative political parties. That's all that we have for you today on this episode of the Daily Roundup. To follow these stories and many more, log on to our website www.newsclick.in, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook.
Thank you for watching.